Well, now that we have two effective vaccines available or almost available to Americans, what is the best way for people to decide whether they should get the vaccine? Joining me now is Dave Lashman, the editor of Venture Technology. And Dave, you have really been looking into the uh, results that we've seen out of the FDA for both Pfizer and now, as of Tuesday, Moderna as well. What are we learning? Well, the first thing is these vaccines work. If we had enough of them, everyone could get them and everyone should get them. There's no real risks that are popping that don't counteract the total effectiveness that we're seeing. These vaccines are at least 95% effective in real world challenge. But what does that mean in practical terms? It means it protects you. So when all these vaccine trials started, we assumed that they'd be 70% effective, which means everyone else around you also has to be protected because mm. there's a 30% chance the vaccine fails. Here, we're seeing 95% effectiveness, both from Pfizer and Moderna. And what it means is if you get this shot, you are protected. In fact, what Moderna found is that 30 people who did not get the vaccine that were part of the placebo group, group uh, advanced to severe disease. And no one out of 12,000 who got Moderna's vaccine developed severe disease. So it's not only raw protection from infection, but also protects you from the worst ravages of the disease. And that's great news. It means that you control your own herd immunity. You've also talked with our audience about side effects. What do we know about those in the case of the Moderna vaccine? We know that there are some. We know that about five times more likely you'll get a serious side effect if you got the vaccine compared to the placebo. And the placebo is a shot. So it's not the shot itself, it's not the needle, it's what's in the needle. We also know it's about 10 times more likely that you get an injection site reaction of grade three, which is a serious side effect if you get the vaccine. And you know, for those of us making this decision, what kind of side effects are we talking about? I mean, you've, you've used words like serious. Um, does that mean I have to call a doctor? Does that mean I have to miss work? What level are we talking about here in practical terms? Serious means that you'd wanna call a doctor. Moderate means you're gonna miss work. Mild means it's ouchy. So we're well past well past ouch and well into missing days of work and 10 percent of the time uh consulting a physician at, at least by phone but we're not seeing we're not seeing any critical side effects and we're not seeing any deaths related to the vaccine you know you and i have talked about the limited number of vaccines that the u.s government bought we have a hundred million or so that they've um pre-purchased from pfizer about the same from uh, Moderna, and we know there's well over 300 million people in this country. So we can safely assume that the, re that the vaccine is going to have to be rationed. That tells me we need to really be able to self-identify whether we need to get it uh, now or later. And so to those people who are on the fence, you would say what about, uh, what is the best way for them to consider whether they should get it or not? I'm not a doctor, I'm not your doctor, so I'm not making a decision for you. I'm saying as a national policy, because you have to give two doses for Moderna or Pfizer, those 200 million available only treats 100 million people. So if we had to choose who's most at risk and who's most worthy of protection, after doctors and nurses, after the military, and after teachers who can turn our schools back on, I'd say people 50 and over or 50 pounds overweight or more. And then from there, I'd lower the number as we have more, more doses available. I would note that we're not hearing you recommend that the older folks in nursing homes, the elderly, be vaccinated. Why is that? I wouldn't give them a priority over 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, or 70-year-olds. By the time you're in a nursing home, you literally are, you're not in rehabilitation. You're in the last stages of life. You're not going to be raising children, you're not gonna be contributing to the economy. And there's so many people that are at such severe risk, uh, socially and economically, and that make our country go, that I wouldn't prioritize people in nursing homes more than someone who's 70 and, in, and an active part of their community, or 60 and running a company. 
or 50 and teaching. And talk to me about the next vaccine and where we are with the, the next vaccine approval, right? Because there are a lot of them in the pipeline, but if we don't get in on the, that, those, that first 100 million doses, where does that leave us? What, what are we looking at next? What's the next vaccine to be approved here in the United States? The answer is we don't know. Uh, I bet that the next thing we'll see is a vaccine from Novavax, but until we have efficacy data, until it's close to 95% effective like the other two, it won't be approved, even if it has no side effects because tap water has no side effects, but it also has a 0% efficacy, right? So we need to see what dose Novavax put into clinic, what it shows in the real world in patients in the middle of a COVID flare. We don't know yet. I suspect that Novavax will be good enough and have less side effects. So one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that children should be first in line is because I suspect we're going to see in the future a vaccine with less side effects, but nobody over 50 can wait. And okay. nobody 50 pounds overweight or more should wait. And what about uh, the time that we're waiting to get to that next vaccine? Uh, how, how far is that next vaccine away approximately? Even if you don't know precisely, are we months? Are we the end of 2021? Are we the middle of 2021? What's your take? My guesstimate would be mid 2021. So uh, the first vaccines we see from Novavax would probably fall into where we see resupply from Moderna and Pfizer. So really it's gonna depend on the data. All right, Dave Lashman there, the editor of Venture Technology. Thanks for your thoughts on all of this. We appreciate it. And if you'd like to see much more content just like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Jessica Stone.